มากิมโอ้กิตาลายนบลมีลพาพุนยูกินีอีกมาพิเตะมีพระอามามาสตูรุลกามไปนิมยูพระลองซิดนีซิดาวน์วันเทมยูพระตอกตอกกายกายวันเทมยูพระนักกรีซลิกลิกตูลักาคุณอาทิตย์นี้ทุกคน Thank you for your interest and ongoing support for PNG. You don't often hear it, but most of us sitting here today and at home really appreciate your visits and your plans to invest in our country. I've been PNG's treasurer since August 2019, a bit over. Four years, and as Anthony mentioned this morning, I first shared a podium here in 1997, 27 short years ago, as then Minister for Mining. Um, my background is a business person, and I hope I bring a relevant business perspective to my job. Um, in my 20 minutes this afternoon, I want to explain our PNG government's economic reform program and say, if PNG used to be a good place to invest, I hope you'll see that it is becoming an even better place to invest. For example, Prime Minister Morape, who just joined us this afternoon, thank you. Uh, this morning mentioned a second W project, and then Terra of Exxon Mobil uh, detailed it uh, a bit more this afternoon. And I understand an application uh, for some small tax concessions uh, for some initial drilling works might be forthcoming. And I would like to share with you this afternoon. Uh, Treasury would be keen to give favourable consideration, subject to understanding more the requests and, of course, the cost of it. Hmm. Sounding now like an accountant. But at this time, we still face some challenging impediments to business. Some we are addressing reasonably well. Some we still have some way to go. Let's see what some of them are. Before getting into all of the details, can I uh, set out a broader context? I am a treasurer in a reformist government. We have an agenda for change. We recognise that governments have not done enough to deliver for our people in Papua New Guinea since independence 48 years ago. Economic reforms are underway, and they will continue. And behind our ambitious economic reform program, we have the support of the International Monetary Fund. We invited them in to ensure transparency in our actions. We very much want the international credibility of the IMF and our achievements are being recognized. 
Now, our budget outlook is set out in our 13-year budget repair plan. This slide is just an image of the plan. Clearly, the figures are way too small to read. Uh, but the point of putting it on the screen um, is to make it clear that we have a detailed plan, a detailed 13-year budget repair plan with specific costed reforms. So you might ask, why do we need budget repair? Well, we inherited big debt and deficits when we changed government in 2019. And no, I'm not going to be uh, blaming uh, the other team or the other guy. And then COVID-19 smashed our revenues in 2020, 2.5 billion or 18% out of our projected 14.1 billion kina. On this slide, the orange line represents our budget balance or, or deficit. We currently have a budget deficit of 4.9 billion kina projected for this year, and most probably on track, or 4.4% of GDP, down from 7.3 billion, or then a worry, 8.9% of GDP during COVID in 2020, like most other countries. In the just past 2024 uh, budget, Parliament again has agreed to cut this deficit down by another billion kina to 3.9 billion, or 3.3% of GDP. We have worked very hard in the last four years to reduce debt. We have revenues growing faster than expenditures, so our deficit keeps getting smaller. In 2027, we target a surplus. When the orange line crosses the, the zero line, uh, the first in 14 years since 2010, we then start paying down our debt from 2027. So the blue line, the blue debt line starts getting smaller. And over the next seven years to our key target date of 2034, giving the government of the day an option to pay all of our sovereign debt. On budget repair, that is fiscal consolidation and reconstruction, I'll explain in a minute, our government are fully committed to them. On fiscal consolidation, according to the IMF, PNG's rate of budget repair is in the top 20% of all countries in the world, as I explained a little earlier. Now, here's an interesting point. Some commentators have claimed that PNG's debt is out of control. Well, let's compare ourselves with Australia. After we account for all subnational debts in Australia, PNG's current debt levels of 52% of GDP are below Australia's general government gross debt level of 60%. And we are determined and on track to reduce this further to the lower 40%, 43% to be specific, by 2027, the end of this term of parliament. Why does this matter for businesses. It means that the government is getting out of the way of the private sector. We are not competing for more loans 
and crowding out investments. This, of course, will help keep down pressure, keep downward pressure on interest rates and inflation. Now, on reconstruction, we have increased our public investment budget, or PIP, by 257% to 7.3 billion kina. One clear example of its impact has been our signature, PNG Connects program, building new infrastructure, including roadworks. Have a look at this very short video of one of the remotest village communities, not just in PNG, but in the world, Urapmin village, about six hours walk from Telephone Station in Sundown Province. You used to know it as West Sipic. Telephone Station was re-established in 1944 by McLay of the Lay Brothers fame. And under instructions from the US Defense Force then, uh, he started redeveloping it. Now, after the Second World War ended in 1945, the world and even governments had forgotten this village and this district for over 80 years until November last month. This is the human face of budget repair, reconstruction, and our public investment program. A fundamental goal of our Marape Rosso government is to lift the quality of life of our people, like most governments, through inclusive growth. As treasurer, I must grow the economy. This is why I'm here. I want you with your skill sets and your investments to help me grow the size of the PNG economy. The resource sector is a very critical part of this. It is a growing share of our economy. Although some commentators forget about the other three quarters of the economy, which of course must also be supported. Growth prospects are good, even without new resource projects, driven of course by our non-resource sector. New projects though do provide a significant upside. Say it louder, did I hear you call out? And this is very important and even critical for our country. So for example, if the Papua LNG project proceeds, our non-resource GDP in 2025 would be expected to be up from 99 billion kina projected to 103 billion kina, lifting our growth rate to over seven to eight percent. And from 2028, from 2028, we'd add 12 billion kina in LNG and condensate exports, lifting real GDP growth rate in that year to 11 percent, instead of the four percent in our 13-year plan. PNG's job market is very, very different to Australia's. Estimated formal sector workforce is less than 10% of working age population. Our key government priority, of course, is to get more of our people, especially our young people, into work. In terms of wages, they are certainly low relative to Australia. Government is working very hard to improve our skill levels, and we still need some help 
in this regard. Inflation is forecast to fall from 6.6% in 2022 to 3.5% this year, and then returning to a normal 5%. That's well below our long-term average of 7% in Papua New Guinea. Can I talk a little bit now about our country's most fundamental business issue of foreign exchange shortages? And can I assure you again that our government, this government, has been listening to those concerns? We have started major reforms to our central bank. And if you go and listen to the acting governor, Elizabeth Genia, tomorrow in the session um, ready for the boom, you can see we have new leadership that knows that changes are required. First step to fixing a problem, well, is admitting there is one. The aim is to move back towards complete keener convertibility. Like here in Australia, with your Australian dollar, PNG citizens must be able to convert their kina to any currency in the world for any amount and at any time. Our kina has started a slow depreciation against the US dollar under an IMF supported program. Our priority focus is to get rid of delays for import orders. We have a new agreement between the IMF and our central bank to limit the size of outstanding import trade orders, excluding service and capital orders at this time. So effective January 1 next year, we have a cap of 150 million kina by the end of March, falling to 75 million kina by end of the year. So what does this mean? Well, currently we have a central government policy of providing a minimum of 100 million US dollars or about 360 million kina. Now, if you were to look at the Bank of South Pacific order book for trade, and if we were to use, for example, their uh, September numbers, they had an amount of 854 million kina, let's say 850 million. Under the new intervention, we would need to supply the difference between 850 and 150 million. So, 700 million kina. Compare that to our current releases of 360 million, it would mean that we would be releasing an additional um, 340 million kina to what we are doing already. Some big improvements with our short-term solutions. We're also looking and we'll start progressing and advancing further uh, simplica simplifications on the process for tax clearance certificates. So I expect that these will be seen as uh, very major turning points. Uh, in concluding, and based on our conservative 13-year budget repair plan, where we have not provisioned economic forecasts, including revenues, from any resource projects that have not announced a final investment decision. Growth forecasts for our PNG economy of 122 billion next year will, as Prime Minister Marape shared with us this morning, to 200 billion kina by 2031. Uh, he possibly was a little busy this morning, ran out of time. Um, so let me come in. Um, further to that, we are forecasting an economy to grow to 300 billion by 2035. 
And here's a number you haven't heard before. By 2048, a one trillion PNG economy. Bold numbers, I agree. Bold numbers, but achievable. And even bolder, our government's vision of developing Papua New Guinea as a hub between the Pacific and the wider Asian region. Also mentioned by Prime Minister Marape this morning. So Papua New Guinea based between an economy, an Australian economy of 1.7 trillion US dollars and China, an economy of 18.1 trillion US dollars. And finally, we prefer growth in Papua New Guinea to be based on trade and investment. Though defense dollars can sometimes be a little tempting. Thank you for listening. Na lukim yu plakin. Time you meet to blah boom, long one em time, long one em hap, you meet to blah by come up long em. Good afternoon. <laughs>